lies on the Marble Arch, starting point in Britain of the Blerio commemoration race. Timed out at 8 a.m. was Captain Red Rory Walker, off like a shot on the pillion of Bernard Barnes' motorbike. Then away went Sterling Moss, making for Lid Airport. Hoping to put the skids under the fast men was roller skating Lieutenant Commander Bill Bokes. He only got as far as the Thames. Maybe it was too cold to swim. Another optimist started in a bubble car. In fact, there were optimists galore. George Isles clocked out, his attempt sponsored by Radio Taxis. His first objective was the Battersea Heliport. With him went our cameraman Ken Goddard to film the whole trip. Every second counted. The Radio Taxi lost no time to the river. The helicopter was already warming up as Isles and Goddard arrived and lost no time in getting in. Their destination was the famous wartime airfield of Fighter Command, Biggin Hill. Excellent views of London on the way. This helicopter and plane method looks like the best bet on the air race. Anyway, the next few days will show. Ready and waiting was Apprentice Aircraft. Destination to Sousse, which is about 15 miles outside Paris. The Apprentice is a nice little aircraft, but of course it hasn't got the speed over the channel or anywhere else of the jet that Captain Walker was using. Still, it wasn't long before Isles and Goddard were over France. Meanwhile, at the Arc de Triomphe, again on the back of a motorbike, came Rory Walker. So excited, he hit the deck as he rushed to clock in. His time was 57 minutes, 47. He'd set a standard only the fastest could hope to beat. It was an almost incredible time from the heart of London to the Arc de Triomphe. Nearly two hours later, Goddard was filming Paris. And then Isles and he touched down at Toussus, the end of another stage of an exciting trip. Formalities of customs waved, they got into a French radio taxi. Only 14 miles to go. Now came the real excitement. A French driver on his metal. Hens, chickens, pedestrians will advise to stay indoors. The crowd at the checkpoint thought the brakes had failed and took evasive action. Isles time, two hours, 45 minutes. That was 42 seconds faster than Sterling Moss. And very few men ever beat him by that much. The Sterling, of course, went a lot of the way by car, which shows what you can do when you can really drive. Well, our cameraman was in Paris. Will anyone who sees him just say we'd like to see him back sometime?